solar powered inverter based home lighting system installation selco office in hubli receives an inquiry from an end user for an inverter based solar home lighting system the sales executive visits the end user to discuss about the solar home lighting system inquires about the number and type of load requirement and the usage hours he does the site survey along with the end user to find a shadow free location for placing the panel and also a dry and ventilated place to keep the batteries and checks the wiring layout he fills the order acknowledgement form and takes the signature of the end user confirming the order and thanks him and leaves sales executive arrives at the branch office and briefs the branch manager about the requirement of the end user and submits the order acknowledgement form branch manager gives the acknowledgement to the office administrator and briefs him to generate the interbranch memo the office administrator raises the interbranch memo and goods receipt note and generates a delivery chalan which includes the material list and tax and service invoice he checks the material received from the godown as per the delivery chalan he calls the end user and confirms the availability date and time for installation he gets the signature of branch manager on the delivery chalan branch manager briefs the technician about the order and asks him to get the material ready technician takes the delivery chalan warranty card installation completion certificate annual maintenance contract and user manual with branch seal he goes to the godown and collects all the components listed in the delivery chalan he packs the safety kit and tools required for installation and loads the components carefully in the pickup truck he unloads the materials with the help of the assistant and carries it inside the house technician greets the end user and takes the signature of the end user on the delivery chalan confirming the delivery of materials solar powered inverter based home lighting system components solar panel 250 watt three numbers array junction box module mounting structure power conditioning unit 2 kV ampere battery 200 ampere hour two numbers earthing kit the technician prepares for the installation he wears the safety shoes jacket gloves and the helmet enter the serial number of the panel and battery for warranty fix the module mounting structure to the panel using nuts bolts and screws with the help of spanner check the direction using a compass and adjust the module mounting structure facing towards south direction with appropriate inclination as per the region of maximum radiation mark the floor near the legs of the module mounting structure in order to construct a block type foundation lay the bricks alongside the mark area of cementing
Add the concrete mixture to make the foundation firm. Leave the concrete to dry for one day to avoid cracks and fix the solar module on the module mounting structure only after the cement dries. After one day, place the panels on the module mounting structure. Fix the panels to the module mounting structure using nuts and bolts and tighten using spanners. Fix a plate to fix the array junction box to one of the legs of the module mounting structure using nuts and bolts and tighten using two spanners. Fix the array junction box to the plate using nuts and bolts and tighten using a screwdriver. The array junction box is used to interconnect solar modules and the output is then given to the power conditioning unit. The array junction box has an inbuilt surge protection device and a miniature circuit breaker for protection against voltage and current fluctuations. Three wires are connected to the array junction box output point. Green wire is for earthing of array junction box and the other two are positive and negative input for the power conditioning unit. PVC pipe is fixed to the module mounting system using a cable tie. Strip the wires from both the panels using a wire stripper and connect the lugs using a wire crimper and then connect it to the array junction box. Red wire positive, black wire negative. Use a multimeter to check the output voltage of the panel. Ensure that the reading shows zero as the miniature circuit breaker is turned off. This shall confirm that the miniature circuit breaker is in working condition. The array junction box earthing wire is stripped. Connect the lugs using a wire crimper and connect it to a bolt. Connect it to the leg of the module mounting structure for grounding. Now switch on the miniature circuit breaker and close the array junction box. After fixing the array junction box, pass the array junction box output wires through the PVC pipe and fix the pipe using clamps. Start the wiring by taking the output of array junction box to the power conditioning unit room. Now, for the battery connection, scratch off the metal part of the terminal for better connectivity. Apply petroleum jelly on the terminal to avoid rusting. After that, connect the wires to the terminals using a spanner. Red wire to positive and black wire to the negative terminal. Remove the battery cap and fix the floats of the battery in order to check the water level. If the indicator is below the red line, the battery needs to be serviced. Connect the battery to the power conditioning unit. Before connecting the cable to the power conditioning unit, ensure that the battery and the miniature circuit breaker should be switched off. Make sure to maintain a minimum distance of one and a half feet between the battery and the power conditioning unit for safety reasons. Switch on the power conditioning unit and the miniature circuit breaker and check 
the indicator for battery charging. Now, connect the array junction box output to the power conditioning unit's solar input terminal. Always connect the battery to the power conditioning unit before connecting the solar input to avoid any damage to the power conditioning unit. After that, connect the grid input protection box in between the grid and power conditioning unit for protection. Grid input protection box has an inbuilt surge protection device and a miniature circuit breaker for protection against voltage and current fluctuations. Mark the place on the wall to mount the grid input protection box and drill holes in the wall using a drilling machine. Mount the grid input protection box on the wall using a screwdriver. Connect the grid to the input terminal of grid protection box and the output of the grid protection box to the power conditioning unit. Strip red and black wires. Connect it to the input terminal of grid input protection box. Red wire is connected to the line terminal and the black wire is connected to the neutral terminal. Strip the next set of red and black wires and connect them to the output terminal of grid protection box. Connect the earthing wires of the grid and power conditioning unit together to the earthing terminal of the grid input protection box. The grid input protection box connection is complete. Now turn on the miniature circuit breaker switch and cover the grid input protection box. Connect the plug from the grid input terminal of the grid input protection box to the grid. The power conditioning unit connection is complete and the load is to be connected to the output terminal of power conditioning unit. Switch the old luminary with the new one and test to see if it is working. Now to do the earthing, dig two earthen pits of 1 foot by 1 foot by 3 foot and use the ready-made chemical earthing kit. Strip the earthing cable from the array junction box and the grid input protection box and connect it to the clamp of the earthing rod. Leave a minimum of 3 feet distance between the earthing of the array junction box and the grid input protection box and fill the pit with mud. One set of wire, positive and negative, goes inside the house to connect the power conditioning unit. One wire, green color, 10 square millimeter, through the pipe goes to the earth for earthing the array junction box. The technician explains the working of the solar power inverter based home lighting system, the indicators on the power conditioning unit and the do's and don'ts, its maintenance and safety measures to be taken while using the system. The end user switches on the luminary to verify the completion of the installation. Technician takes the signature of the end user on the installation completion statement and warranty card and hands over the warranty card, thanks the end user and leaves.